My guest this morning is the woman that I admire as much as any woman that I have ever met in the whole world. General Eva Burroughs is a remarkable, wonderful friend to all humanity. She just received the Australian of the Year Award, the highest honor that the nation of Australia can present upon one of its citizens. For well over a hundred years, the Salvation Army has been around this world. No Christian movement has more integrity, more trust from people than the Salvation Army. She was elected in 1986 to be the first woman commanding general of the five million members of that faith worldwide. She was elected to the full five-year term and then, quite unprecedented, was elected to two more years. She was the eighth of nine children, born into a Salvation Army family, went to Queensland College University for her undergraduate degree before she went on to study in the Army ministry, but she felt a strong call for Jesus Christ. And uh, I'd like to just take a few moments now, introduce her to you, ask her a question or two, and then deliver this platform, this program, this church, this ministry over to her voice and to her spirit, because I know then Jesus Christ will truly be in charge. Welcome, Eva Burroughs. Thank you very much, Dr. Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to be here. I'm, uh, I'm, quite, uh, I'm quite privileged to be preaching from this platform, because I know there are still some people in the world uh, a little reluctant about women preachers, you know. Really? Have you ever had a comment to that effect? Oh, yes, now and again. Uh, actually, you know, once when I went to be the commander in Australia, uh, I was preaching one Sunday morning in one of our Salvation Army worship centers. And after the service, I, I went to the door, shaking hands with the people, and one Salvation Army lady said to me, oh, you know, uh, when I heard we were having a woman commander, I was a little anxious, I was a little worried. But she said, this morning, when I heard you preach, I said, there's a man of God. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am, a man of God, Dr. Chilla. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Listen, you were one of eight, you, the eighth of nine children. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yes, there were nine of us all together. My parents were Salvation Army officers and... Uh, People used to joke and say my father had his own band and his own choir with him. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that you met Castro? Fidel Castro, yes, yes. You did? Yes, I was in Cuba. And you know, um, religious freedom is just burgeoning again. People are going back really? to church. Yes. Really? And um, we were told uh, that uh, Castro would see me. But we uh, were so shocked because he didn't see me till half past till. I think half past ten at night. And uh, we got so involved in conversation that when it was midnight, I said, excuse me, uh, Dr. Castro, but I have to catch a plane at six o'clock in the morning. And he said, why are you going so soon? <laughs> <laughs> We'd had a wonderful talk about the Christian faith. And he said to me, he said, you know, the last person who sat in that chair was Mother Teresa. I've let her come with her sisters here and the Salvation Army can work here too. Was this, was this recent? Yes, that was about, um, oh, I think about a, month, a year ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. a year ago. But you know, when he was talking to me, his long beard and his beady eyes, and he was very passionate, I thought of our founder, William Booth, you know, he used to have a beard and beady eyes, and I thought, if only Castro had found Christ instead of communism. What a difference. Of well, all the people in the world that you've met and you know, is there anyone that particularly impacted you more significantly? Well, I, I, everywhere where I would go to a country, I would see the leader of the country. So I've met great leaders like your own presidents here in America, President Mugabe. but. The most wonderful experience was to meet Mother Teresa. Uh, I was in Calcutta to see the Salvation Army's work there, 
And uh, actually, we have a hostel in Calcutta. And all the young people from around the world who go to help Mother Teresa, they stay in our hostel. It's very cheap, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when Mother Teresa and I had the time to talk together, uh, I said to her, uh, Mother Teresa, how do you cope with the applause and all the adulation? And she said, it doesn't matter to me. She said, but one thing has made me very happy. I've taught people to talk to the poor and not just about the poor. And then she said, and people say to me, I'm doing a wonderful social work. But she said, I'm not, I, I'm not. All that I'm doing, she said, is demonstrating the love of Jesus Christ. And then she said, that's what you're doing. Absolutely. And I thought that was a beautiful compliment because that's all that the Salvation Army wants to do, to demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ, whether it's in the earthquakes or whether it's the homeless or the poor and the hungry, demonstrating. Love of Jesus. Now, you went and spent how many years in Africa? Zimbabwe, is that the place? That's right, uh, Central 14, Africa. I was yes. a teacher there. 14 years? 17. 17? Yeah. My. And is it true you stood in line in South Africa? And when they refused to serve the blacks, you walked away? Yes, yeah, those were the days of apartheid. I, yes. I lived in Zimbabwe and I was down in South Africa. And you know, I, I think it's very important when you're a teacher and a preacher to really try and identify with the people. And so I, I really felt the aspirations of the Africans. And so when I went to South Africa and I saw in the post office that this line was for whites to buy stamps and this line was for blacks, I went to the, white, I went to the black line. And when I got up to the counter, the fellow said, I, I can't serve you here. But I said, I want some stamps. And he said, I can't serve you. You've got to go to the other line. This is the black line. I said, I'm black. And he said, sorry. So I said, OK, I won't stay, thanks. So I left. And that's identification with the people whom I loved and served. <laughs> you are a courageous general. Listen. I wasn't a general then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just an ordinary young servant of Jesus Christ working in Africa, loving it, thinking I'd be there to the, for the rest of my life. Uh, some people don't know the founding of your faith, uh, not your faith, your, the movement, Salvation Army. Salvation Army. Mm. Uh, bring some of these people up to date. Well, the Salvation Army is about 128 um, years old. It was begun by a charismatic, powerful man of God who was preaching in the East End of London where people knew agonizing, grinding poverty. And uh, he wasn't preaching long before he realized that these people needed more than just the gospel. They needed food, shelter, care. And so he became uh, not only a fiery uh, preacher and evangelist, but a compassionate champion of the poor, great social reformer. And in those two aspects of Salvation Army life, uh, encapsulated in, a, in a, a very succinct definition which says the Salvation Army is a vital spiritual force with an acute social conscience. You know, I don't know if you know, Dr. Schuller, but today the Salvation Army is going to pick up a big truckload of food and clothes from people here in the cathedral and friends of Orange County giving to us. Thank you very much. Yeah. We still need more. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because we use your Salvation Army as a distribution channel to deliver food to hungry people. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that we should start our own organization when there's an organization like yours that can do it and we can work with you. Uh, there, the, the general, Booth, there were three evils he, he liked to point out. Yeah. That's 120 years ago, and my goodness, you'd think he was talking today. What were they? Well, William Booth said that the three great social evils were poverty, unemployment, and homelessness. And we've still got those problems with us. We haven't learned, have we? No. Maybe it's something that, that Jesus could foresee when he said, the poor you have always with you. 
Yes, and you know, when Jesus said, the poor you have always with you, that wasn't denigrating the poor. No. He was saying, you will always have an opportunity to help, because they'll always be there. General, um, there was only one other female ever elected to be the general globally of the Salvation Army. Mm. And that was uh, Evangeline, was That's it? That's right. The daughter of the founder. William Booth's daughter. Yes. yes. I was, was named after her. I, yes, <laughs> Eva, named after Evangeline. Yeah, sometimes they joke and say, she was Eva one and I'm Eva two. <laughs> <laughs> and so now, a hundred years later, they have a second female worldwide global general. All over the world, people who know you love you, and I love you, and now I want you to share God's message with all of us. All Thank right? you very much. Thank you. Thank you.